Hi, I'm M. And I'm Lip, and we're your Meta Kids. Today, we're talking about the Stanley Hotel, because it's what you people wanted, and I'm excited about it. You want my pen? Sure. <laughs> You know, so we're talking about fine dining and breathing, so. If you guys don't already know, we're psychic mediums and we like to do this weird thing where one of us does all the research and one of us knows nothing. And today we're doing a haunted location, said being the Stanley Hotel. Um, I'm the one that knows nothing and lived at the research. <clears throat> I don't know that I can do this. <laughs> We did a reaction video to Sam and Colby that I have yet to release. Yeah. So that's the only Do thing. I remember any of that? No, that was over a year ago. The only thing I remember is Sam- wait. Yeah, Sam sitting on- There's like a cowboy dude, that's all I know about it. Oh, in the weird pretty mirrors. Mirrors. Was him sitting on the bench talking about how he doesn't want his attachment Oh yeah, that's where like, they got rid of his attachment. Super dramatic music, and I was like, this is the most dramatic thing I've ever seen. Get yeah, that's what his attachment, like, detached itself or something. They, like, I imagine attachments like parasites, like the weird sucky doodles from Spongebob, and they just, like... Or Pentapox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the day they detached their attachment. <laughs> well, I can't do this. There's too many things. I don't know what you want me to talk about. There's a man. He has a long face, a mustache, his hair is brown and curly, and his glasses, and he's in a big fancy suit. And then there's a lady in a ball gown that has brown hair, is curly, but it's pinned up. Um, and it's a red dress. What do you want to know? Because I can't tell you why it exists because you gave me too much information about knowing about it. <laughs> you don't know anything. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm coming up with the answer or if they're telling me. The Does answer. he look like this? Yeah. <laughs> you said he had a long face. That's a long face. <laughs> yeah, I see him younger though. Yeah. You He's always like, see people younger. Yeah. Okay. That's Freeland Oscar Stanley. And, and then this is this picture that I drew of him. <laughs> <laughs> it can't get closer. The mic is there. That is him. Um, let's see what his wife looks like. <clears throat> yeah, because I keep asking who's talking to me because I'm like, I don't know. Everyone's talking. Yeah, what? Can you just tell me who's talking? And they're like, here's three people that are talking. And I'm like, <laughs> does she look like that? But this is Flora Stanley. She's different. Is that the wife? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like this lady, did, was there plays there? There might have been. Like shows or something? I assume so. I feel like she was a lead that. Mm. Makes sense. I ship it. But I see her in a big red bowel gown. And she, her hair is kind of looks Maybe like that. Maybe she's making shoes of you. <laughs> well, if that's all you're getting, that is totally fine because you are 100% well, seeing a Freeland lot Oscar of Stanley. things in there. So it's like, yeah, being in a room filled with a thousand people that are all talking at once. It's very much like when we went to the Hawthorne Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, it's that so type I, of like, haunted. <laughs> don't know what you want me to tell you. No. Like it's a hotel. People go there. There's like staircase because I we reacted to a video. There's a pretty staircase in the middle of it, and there's a whole bunch of pictures and mirrors around it, and there's portals within that that people, like, float out of. Yeah. And that's how they get here. Oh, my God. And that's how they transition themselves through time to get to that point. Uh-huh. I used mirrors today, too. <laughs> well, yeah, it's funny that you did that because a lot of people view two mirrors facing themselves as portals. It oh, creates portals. I forgot about that. Didn't yeah, you? that's when I looked at that and I was like, yeah, that's a good example. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, if you guys want to watch our vlog to go into Salem, Massachusetts, we stayed at the Hawthorne Hotel and this place is very much haunted like the Hawthorne Hotel. But I'm going to tell you all about the Stanley Hotel because it's really freaking cool. Okay. Well, do you have questions for me before you get into that? I have questions for you after I tell you the history because no matter what I tell you about the history, it doesn't matter. 
because I mean. the hauntings aren't necessarily related to the history, so it doesn't give you information. No. But I will tell you room numbers or rooms, and you can tell me okay. an Is associated there a room. Yeah. Is there like a stage or something in a different building that isn't attached to the place? Yes. Okay. Um, because the thing that they're showing me, they're showing me people in ball gowns. Mm -hmm. Because there's a ballroom there, mm -hmm. and I see a whole bunch of people from like whenever they did balls, whenever. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was so like totally 1900s. <laughs> like we don't do balls. Do used to tell us that we were going to mixers? Yeah, <laughs> that was so, really fun. <laughs> the bottom floor is like happy, has a lot of gold energy, and there's a lot of people talking. When you get to the topper floors, that's where like weird sussy things happen um but that's why i was asking you if this lady like was in some sort of play or show because i feel like there's a building that's a t not attached or something like another building really did shows or something and she says that she's one of like the leads or something mm -hmm. there was a music room and mm -hmm. stuff so yeah yeah but I'll tell you hauntings and you tell me like the okay. listener stories if they're real or not. Great. <laughs> Cause there's a lot that I got. We have to figure out how the Stanley Hotel, we're touching these and I like it. We have to figure out how the Stanley Hotel was built and why first and the people who built it because it's important. So let's get into that. The Stanley Hotel is located in Estes Park, Colorado, which is situated at the base of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Early American travelers were in awe of the beauty and bounty of home, home on the range. So uh, the mountains. It's literally at the base of the Rocky Mountain National Park. Ooh, so when like you look at this mountains. place, you see the Rocky Mountains and it's like right in front of it. Like the backyard is the Rocky Let's Mountains. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll see prairie dogs and big horn sheep, which we did not see in Nevada. I like Col Colorado's okay for me because you can see the prairie dog. I'm gonna get you prairie mm. dog. Anyways, so this was originally home to the, I think the, it could be Ute or Ute and Arapahu nations of Native Americans. And it was also teeming with wilderness wildlife. The founder of the Stanley Hotel is named Freeland Oscar Stanley, and he traveled from the East Coast to the West in 1903 in hopes of curing his bout of consumption, which is not eating too much food, it is actually tuberculosis. <laughs> At the time, there was no cure for tuberculosis, so living in a stress-free environment and getting lots of fresh air was the doctor-prescribed recommendation for, com for curing consumption. Manifestation, I think we did a video on that. We did. Someone cured themselves of tuberculosis through manifestation. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It was like episode three, four, something no like that. No one watches it, don't worry. Manifestation doesn't do well on this channel. Which is funny. Anyways, <laughs> the universe is satirical. So after one season of living in the fresh Colorado mountain air of Estes Park, Stanley was cured. He vowed to himself and his wife, Flora, that they return each summer for the rest of their days to enjoy the bountiful Estes Park area because it was great. But they were kind of a uh, posh posh because Freeland Oscar Stanley came from a family that was not very well to do. However, they were very, his parents or the people who raised him were very set on having education and like learning how to play instruments and learn about science and arithmetic was like core values for their family. So at age nine, he and his twin brother, Francis Edgar, I think it's Edgar Stanley, started their entrepreneurial streak, which started at age nine of running their own maple syrup candy trading business. Like what do you, what else do you do when you're nine? Tap maple trees and sell candy. And then that ended up going into photograph, like photography and making plates for photography things, selling that patent and then becoming rich off of it. And then using that money to invest in their design and implementation of 
making steam-powered cars. So they were the inventors, creators, and sellers of the Stanley steam-powered cars. And in like 1926 or the 1920s, something like that, they broke the land speed record with one of their steam-powered combustion racers. And I think they broke the land speed record at like 126 miles an hour. So he's a businessman. Yeah. But they made steam-powered cars. They had buggies. It looked like carriages without horses and without the tops that were steam-powered. And they just... dangerous. And they would just go everywhere. Jesus. Well, steam-powered things in and of itself are dangerous. (laughs) But at the time, they competed up until the 1920s as the most popular motor car of American time. And then Ford came in with the combustion engine and, like, put, put the steam things. But... Isn't that cool? Weird. Breaking the land speed record in the 1920s with a steam powered thing. They tried mm-hmm. to do it a second time and it blew up. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, maybe we shouldn't do that. No Safe. one no one died though. Uh-huh. That's what you gotta do for science. Blow yourself up a little bit. It's fine. Just a little bit. That's the coolest thing ever. It started with maple syrup. Yeah. And it ended with steam powered cars. Wouldn't it end with a hotel? No, they did lots of other things. The hotel was more so just a labor just of a love. side project. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Anyways, so on July 4th, 1909, after doing all of those things, in 1909 to 1910, he and his wife, Flora, opened the grandiose Stanley Hotel, which was designed and built by them. At the time, it was 48 rooms. It had electricity, in-suite bathrooms, uniform sta- uniformed 48 rooms, electricity, in-suite bathrooms, uniformed staff, telephones, and a fleet of Stanley automobiles at the service of every guest. They also had very high-class guests and also welcomed those who were trying to overcome consumption, just like Stanley did. So at one point, I think they also helped or housed people trying to get over consumption because that's literally why he went there in the first place is because they were like, I think he had a reoccurring bout of tuberculosis, meaning he had it before. And the doctors were like, you have like three months to live. You should probably try and like fight this out. And if not, just die somewhere nice. <laughs> so that's why he went so to- So he went to the mountains? So he went to the mountains, ended up curing himself. And like, then he's Does like- Does this look like fresh enough air? <sighs> he just filter feeded. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why he and his wife decided to build the hotel because after going back, once he got rid of his consumption, his tuberculosis. He stopped eating too much cake. Um, The place there was not very well to do and they were high society Easterners. So when they traveled west, they're like, this is a lot of nothing, so let's change it. And they decided to build this giant hotel. Upon opening the hotel, it was alleged to be one of the few in the world powered entirely by electricity. However, due to a lack of available power, right after the installation of the auxiliary gas lighting system in June 1911. On June 25th, the day after the pipes had been filled with gas, so everything was electric, but as a backup, since technically at the time of it being built, there was no like electricity power station, like power plant, literally nowhere. Um, They had gas power installed in the hotel as a backup in case their small electricity thing that they had going power plant for the hotel were to fall through because of storm or something that like hamster got tired doesn't matter so literally the day after they filled the pipes with gas as the backup um an explosion occurred that injured a maid and damaged the structure though contemporary newspaper articles differ on the certain details of said explosion so Some accounts differ in the name and number of people who were injured. The accepted story is that a single maid was injured in the explosion, but not killed. Other embellishments say that eight people were injured, that the maid was specifically from Pennsylvania, Lancaster, and was blown from the second floor to the first floor and both of her ankles were broken. And then the rest of the people uh, did not matter, I guess. Only the maid did, but other people were severely injured or something. Jesus. According to the embellishments of newspapers. Embellishments. 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 However, no matter what you believe, either way, her name may or may not have been Elizabeth, and her last name may or may not have been used. Yeah, she was white. No, was she a lady in white? 
Oh, no. <laughs> she was a lady in a chambermaid outfit, I guess. Well, god dang. <laughs> I thought all ladies in whites had to be Elizabeth or what was the other one? Sarah. Name? Sarah. <laughs> But her, may or, her name may or may not have been Elizabeth. Most stories say her name was Elizabeth, but the last names differ. And if you use all of the last names, no account of a maid by that name was ever recorded to be an Estes, let alone working for the Stanley. So we'll just say that a maid possibly named Elizabeth was injured, but did not die. So the possible fun embellishments, that is like the most consecutive story that I found, like most of the accounts say something along those lines is, that the maid's name was Elizabeth Wilson and she was a long time chambermaid for the hotel. A nasty storm had blown out the electricity so her job was to light the gas lamps of each occupant's room so that people could see. So one of the guests however blew out their gas lamps before going to dinner or something. I don't know what the rich people do. But they didn't turn off the gas, they just blew it out. Mm. And at that time, back mm. then, gas was not marked with the smell of gas like it is today so is when she entered the room with her candle to light the gas lamp, okay. she ended up blowing up 10% of the hotel. Yeah. At the time, the hotel was 70,000 square feet. So she blew up. Well, she didn't do it. Someone else did. She just facilitated their mistake. <laughs> the big oopsie, if you will, and blew up 7,000 square feet of a brand new hotel, which is fun. And the embellishment is that this giant explosion rocketed her to the first floor dining room below. It was said that Freeland was so devastated that he paid all of her hospital bills, paid for every single one of her children to go to college, promoted her, her to head chambermaid, gave her employment for the rest of her days, no question asked, housing on site for her entire life, and refused her to ever have to light another gas lamp again. Ever. He's like, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Ever. So because of Freeland's investment in his hotel, many other updated infrastructure was added to the area. So by 1917, Estes Park or Estes Valley was actually incorporated into the United States Census and was he was the reason that the Rocky Mountain National Park was created in 1915. So they ended up having a water tower, an actual running electricity facility, and a whole bunch of other like things. But before then it was more like a little tiny town where people got water from like the creek and like did the only prick. homesteading. Got you. So he like single-handedly developed this entire place because he was like, tuberculosis cured me here. So <laughs> here's my hotel the and all air is just things. too dang good. Yeah. <laughs> In the prairie dogs. Sorry, I love prairie dogs. So by the 1970s, the hotel had fallen out of its lustrous prime due to the passing of Freeland in the late 1940s. So anyways, by the time uh, around the 1970s, the hotel kind of found out, like fell out of its prime because it was said and even Freeland himself was quoted saying like, every summer it would open and then in the winters it wasn't really open because people back then didn't want to go out into the middle of the freezing cold to try and ski because that was called dying. What? <laughs> So, what else do you ski? <laughs> I don't think people skied for fun. They did it so that they wouldn't die or they were out chased by an avalanche. But now we do it for fun. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it would close in the winter times and only be open in the summer when guests and visitors would want to be there to like, I don't know, not die of consumption or enjoy a nice dinner. So <laughs> once he died, I guess he was quoted saying when he was alive that it was a labor of love and like every year he'd actually put more money into it than was actually like that it made. So he was always in the red with it. But since he had so much money from his other business ventures and various patents, he was like, this is what I like to do in my free time is be at my hotel and make people happy. So he just, but when he was gone, no one was putting more money into it and it was losing money until the seventies. So. The hotel was a labor of love to him, so once he passed, no one was there to front the bill. However, on a fall evening, Stephen and Tabitha King checked into the hotel as many of its seasonal visitors left for the winter. After roaming the halls of the desolate mammoth of a hotel, King went back to his rural, rent, went back to his room, mulling over ideas for his working book titled Dark Shine. When he arrived back to his room, he moved back the pink bathroom curtain to reveal, to reveal a clawed foot bathtub. According to multiple interviews, he ha he gave different ones and I'll tell you a little bit of, about all of them, but this one has to do with the pink tub or the, the pink curtain and the clawed foot tub. When he moved the pink bathroom curtain aside and saw that the bathtub was old, 
He said the appearance of the historic bathtub parked the like peaked the question of what if someone died in this thing? <laughs> Always. Thus, he decided to use the stately hotel to draw inspiration to write one of his most famous works, The Shining. <laughs> dun, oh dun. yeah. <laughs> so, according to whatever, Stephen King and his wife stayed there, and because the place was so grandiose but starting to be run down, but literally they were like the only guests in there, he was like, this place is creepy. There's clawed foot bathtubs that make me feel like people died in there. So let's have some child talk to his finger, it's evil. I never watched The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched bits and pieces of it. There's a dude that like smashes his head through a hole, and he's like, here's Johnny. I think that's what it was. Weird. <laughs> So, I guess King and his wife stayed in room 217, and in different interviews, he reported different things. So, he said he had a dream where his son, at the time, who was like three or five, was being chased by a garden hose while he was at the hotel. Another time, he said that when he was in his room while staying in the hotel, a maid walked through and then like went through another door or something, or through a wall, and she just walked through her his room, and he was like, Woo! I just saw a ghost. <laughs> It's more likely. <laughs> yeah. And he also said that he saw people in the ballroom, but there weren't actually people there. So, I mean, dude, I know what you feel, what it feels like. Well, I feel like there's actually people in the ballroom at all times. Um, oh, for sure. The witch room. He stayed in a room. 217. Um, I think people don't like that room or, like, have made it scary. Yeah. Well, after he started it's telling people. cold and slimy. <laughs> Well, after he started telling people that he stayed in room 217, yeah. um, he, like, and that he had weird dreams and that he saw dead people in the ballroom and stuff like that, everyone's like, oh, it's so scary! So, you know. He's, he does it look like the green right? slime monster from <laughs> Ghostbusters, but more lethargic and less like, oh! Yeah, I see a bed, and then I see this, like, goopiness, and then, like, two eyes pop up. It's just, like, the entire bed is on top of a big slime pile, and the slime eyes just come up and, like, stare at him. But it's, like, funny because you're telling me that he had funny dreams, and I was like, he's a writer, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like the, it's like he wrote this thing into existence. Makes sense. And it's not like he physically did it, he did it subconsciously, because then he's like, did you know this room is scary? And then everyone else put their scary whatever into the gloopy Literally monster. Literally everything becomes negatively haunted. <laughs> well, I mean, I know, but it, my yeah. spirit guides are like, yeah, he wrote this character into existence, and it's funny because he writes things, but mm -hmm. I feel like the thing that is in there, if you stay in there, it gives you weird dreams. Probably. It's like a hallucinogenic sort of thing. Mm. Because That's people are scared. Fun. <laughs> but yeah, so it's funny because it says, and he has said, that the Stanley Hotel is the inspiration for his, his hotel called the Overlook Hotel in his 1977 novel, The Shining. But then in other accounts, he's like, this hotel means nothing. It is not at all representative of the hotel that I wrote about in my book, and I drew new, no inspiration from it, but then he also says the opposite, so, you know, what? The room is really cold, too. <laughs> um, so, it was also the filming location for the related 1997 TV miniseries. However, the 1980 film adaptation, not directed or in cohorts with Stephen King uh, was filmed at a different hotel and I think it's room 237 that they say is haunted because the hotel that it's not the Stanley Hotel that they used to film the movie in they didn't want people to actually like think the hotel was haunted so they gave it a room that isn't associated with the hotel where it was actually filmed at because they were like that's we bad want to get in trouble for that yeah <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but the thing that Stephen King helped with with the, the TV miniseries, they actually used the Stanley Hotel for that because he was like, that movie stinks, I'm gonna make my own TV series. But then the TV series got like 35% on Rotten Tomatoes, whatever that means. Despite a peaceful early history in the years following the publication of The Shining, the Stanley Hotel gained a reputation for setting for, gained the reputation as a setting for paranormal activity. 
It has hosted numerous paranormal investigators and appeared in the show such as Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. The hotel also has offered tours, guided tours, which feature spaces that are reputable as exceptionally paranormally active. So room 217 is said to be the most haunted room because that's where Mr. Stephen King decided to stay. Because we or wrote was a character into key existence. For. What? Because we made a character of existence <laughs> in that room. <laughs> it is said that King saw what is believed to be the ghost of Elizabeth Wilson from the gas explosion. She walks from one side of the room and through the other wall to the other. However, in her day, she doesn't do that. <laughs> when she walks through, when she walks through the room or like through the wall in room two seventeen. Uh, in her day, room 217 and now room 215 of today was actually just one giant big suite. So she's actually walking from the room as it ha like as how it used to be. So if he is seeing anything, it is 100% not an act of haunting. Is it a residual thing? Tis not her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it's a, a thing really. And if it is, it's not active. Yeah, it's a residual thing because she's telling me. Um, it's she's like, really cute. Is she like super small and adorable? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she like is telling me that fire records things easier. It like burns it into things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's like, that's why that in can like that moment that wasn't like necessarily prominent happened and is replaying there. Yeah, she's That's also telling me that when she walks through the wall, she was going all the way to like the opposite side of the room to light something. Mm -hmm. And that's why the explosion wasn't as bad because it was almost near like an outside wall or a wall that wasn't as oh, located God. to like bad things. So she wasn't hurt because the explosion didn't like go out and like hit her. It had more room to travel. Yeah. But she's <laughs> she's not there. No. She's really cute. She's like this little tiny gray haired lady. So we're gonna get into more of the hauntings that Emma's gonna tell you if they're real or not. Or give it her best get, cause she's a psychic medium. Mm hmm Okay, so, Flora Stanley is said- Oh, Flora. Yeah. That's the lady that's in the big poofy dress. Yeah, it's Stanley's, uh, Stanley's wife. Mm -hmm. It's not her then. <laughs> I thought it would be Flora. So, I feel like it's someone else. Flora. Did Flora do weird things in the music hall? Huh? She yeah, likes to I play piano. Know. I'm not confused. So, it might be Flora then. <laughs> Flora Stanley is said to play music in the music room and next to it when other people are trying to play their music. She likes to play piano. So in the music room she will play the piano that's like by the big grand window I think. Um, but also when that music room is like booked out for people for the hotel to like put on shows she will play music in the room next door over top of them like screw you this is my time which is really funny she's also seen in the music room and she's also been sighted on the grand stairs like atop the grand staircase like you want yeah she her she's like there mm -hmm. she like tells me that she still like works there yeah, I mean, she and her husband made it their like labor of love, so it makes sense to me that she still hangs out there and like interacts with guests and yeah, like band not <laughs> the souls that go there. She um, still works for them. That's the way she can describe it to me. Cause she's like the head honcho, obviously. So I don't know how to explain what that means. Works yeah. for her. no, she was in charge of everything. So, I mean, yeah. her and her husband owned it. She so. still is. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. cute. So Freeland Stanley is also seen overseeing the running of the hotel like when he was alive, no big deal. There's not really anything like specific about him. People just see him, I guess, and he's like talking to other people that are or aren't there. The fourth floor, it is believed that the Earl of Dunraven, the fourth one to be exact, is believed to haunt the fourth floor. Um, that floor in the olden days was the nanny floor and used for guests' children. Um, he's also said to steal jewelry and put it somewhere else and that he is usually associated with the smell of tobacco smoke. However, no one has ever actually seen him. They just smell him and feel him. I wish people could only smell or feel me. Is that the weird me. cowboy thing that you're talking about? 
No, this is supposed to be the fourth oh, Earl of do. Dunraven. However, the only proof that they have that it is the fourth Earl of Dunraven is that its uh, investigators have used the flashlight game to talk to him. So they ask him questions and they're like, are you the fourth Earl of Dunraven? And the flashlight is like, yeah, dude. Sick. Yeah, that sounds like a fun thing to like lie about troll someone 100%. about. hundred percent. I thought the same exact thing when I was reading this. I was like, he doesn't this feel is that important. <laughs> not the fourth Earl of Dunraven he's at all. He's kind of sleazy. Yeah, I feel like he's a cowboy too. 100%. I feel like he's like under the influence in one way, shape, or form at all times. Well, yeah. But the flashlight game <laughs> tells people that it's the fourth Earl of Dunraven and people also I mean, it. I would say that too. If you were- No, I'd be like, no, I'm the fifth. <laughs> and really just screw with them. I'm the first. Well, people also like to try and rationalize this with the fact that the nannies or the women worked on this floor and the fourth Earl of Dunraven was there to solicit ladies. And I guess, I don't know, maybe children, but that's wrong. So they just, they like to parallel those things, but as a medium. He would manipulate the children to get the ladies. I don't think that it is him, so. <laughs> I don't think so either. Yeah. Eat. I didn't bring my Gatorade. Oh, my leg. Stanky leg. You know? No? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah. There are also lots of children ghosts on the property, apparently. And they're heard all the time. Sometimes they're seen too, but they're, they're seen and they're heard. When If you're a child back then, you're only supposed to be seen and not heard, so they're really getting it wrong. Anyways, um, they're mostly seen on the fourth floor because that was the child care floor back in the day. Um, you can hear children whispering in the closet. One little boy is said to wake up children in the middle of the night and ask them to play. So like children will just wake up and their parents are like, little Tommy, what are you doing out of bed? And he's like, I'm playing with the kid, <laughs> which is fun if you ask me. Um, one likes to turn on and off TVs and lights in random people's rooms on the fourth floor. Oh, did they bring children up there from when their parents were out, like, doing adult things? What do you mean? Yeah, that's what the fourth floor was for. Yeah, it was just weird. I didn't know people did that. Oh, yeah, I mean, if so you gotta asking. bring little Timmy to a nice estate. Because I'm, like, asking them, like, why are there... Like, are these children the children that stay there forever? And some <laughs> lady is, probably a nanny, is telling me, oh no, it's used the same way as it used back then. The parents would go, like, party, and they would have to leave their kids somewhere, so it still happens. That's why they see children on the whatever floor it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not the same children, it's always different. Mm -hmm. It's whoever's staying there at the moment. Yeah, it's really cute. Mm -hmm. I like it. Is the nanny have blonde hair and she's younger? No. Oh. She has brown hair. It's pulled back. She looks like a maid. She might be a maid. I don't know if there's a difference. They probably just look the same. Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so um, some of them turn on and let, turn on and off TVs and lights in the bedrooms on the fourth floor. There's one girl that likes to play peekaboo on the staircase. I guess she's just like I can see you in between the railings, but you can't see me. Um. Although there is not a single account of any child dying on the property ever. There's actually yeah. zero deaths accounted on the property ever. Weird. So no one's actually it's very different than the Cecil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should also specify that every employee that currently works there will only say that it is not malevolently haunted. It is only happily haunted. Yeah. There's no the bad entire place is things. like gold. Yeah. Other than the weird thing associated to like whoever wrote The Shining. <laughs> Stephen King. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, 428, here's your favorite. There's a ghost cowboy who paces at the end of the bed while people sleep. But when female guests wake up, they wake up to him kissing their foreheads. Mm. Which I'm going to add, essentially. Because you don't just wake up and kiss some random lady's forehead unless you're like there to make some moves. I think that was in the Sam and Colby Stanley Hotel thing. Yeah. Well, they're dudes. They're going to talk about a cowboy that well, hits on ladies. But I don't know. <laughs> That's just the room that they like rented or Oh, is booked. it? That's yeah. fun. They like booked two rooms. They should have dressed up as girls. Why? They brought Amanda. That doesn't matter. Amanda's a girl? No, I would have been way funnier if they were trying to trick but a cowboy of the West trick. by cross-dressing. I'm sure they would have gotten some evocation if there's an actual haunted cowboy there. Yeah, he would be pissed. Yeah, he'd be like, what? Tarnation? 
You ain't pretty girls. Yeah, I am pretty girl. Or maybe that's rude. They could be pretty girls. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. You guys could be very pretty girls. <laughs> I'm just saying pigtails. Come on. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, or one of the last things, is the lollipop experiment. So apparently in the music room on the fourth floor, or the music room, I don't know if it's on the fourth floor, that is where children used to be uh, entertained during the day when music things weren't going on. So if you go up there on one of the tours that the hotel will give, they will ask you, or they used to, ask you who do you think in the room is good with children and people will raise their hand and one woman did while she was on a tour and the tour guide gave them lollipops and she's like if you're good with kids sometimes the spirit of the children in the music room will take the lollipop from you if they trust you and this lady was like no shit i held a lollipop out in my hand and talked like i was to a child and the lollipop was moved out of my hand and went a couple feet before dropping slowly to the floor I feel like there's a couple boys that are friends, and then two girls, mm -hmm. and they like kind of think each other have cooties. Cracks. <laughs> <laughs> but someone that went there had the experiment, experience, the lollipop experiment. So do with that what you will. Fun fact. The paranormal investigators who created the Estes Method named it after the Estes Park Hotel, aka the Stanley Hotel, as it was the birthplace of its existence. So the entire time, like as soon as I read that it was in Estes Park, Colorado, I was like, oh, it's not like the Estes Method? And I remember <clears throat> Sam and Colby talking to that, like, oh one, yeah, I think that is when they figured it that out. That one maybe. skinny guy, and he was like, that's, I invented the Estes Method. And I was like, hmm, I don't remember if he said he invented it there, but I want to check it. And that's what I did like 20 minutes ago. And I was like, hey, yeah! But that's why the Estes method is named that because the first time it was tried out by the investigators was at the Stanley Hotel. Did you like my dissertation on the Stanley Hotel? If you didn't, don't tell me because I'll cry. If you like content like this, you should hit the subscribe. Subscribe. You should hit the subscribe button and, uh, and hit that little bell notification so it notifies you when we post next because you watch all of our videos, right? Including the manifestation one. And if you guys want to go, want us to go to the Stanley Hotel, how many likes do we get to? How many likes do our videos usually get? A couple thousand. 500,000? No, 100,000. Okay, 100,000. 100,000 is a lot. You convinced me. If we get 100,000 likes, we'll go to the Stanley Hotel. <sighs> Sorry, there's a, a feather. You have a great day. Okay, bye. We are your medicine. Kiss. You could become a patron like these lovely people. Go for it. Listen, can we come back and haunt a sheet? <laughs> like, why doesn't dark things haunt sheets? And that we'll would be horrific. call ourselves Tally. Horrific. We'll call ourselves Tally. <laughs> yeah, but listen. <laughs> you go oh. into your room and there's just someone with a sheet over them. Yeah. And you pull the sheet up and there's nothing there and the sheet drops to the ground. I would haunt a sheet. <laughs> it's haunted as sheet. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about it. We talked about this like two weeks ago, I think, too. Haunting. We did it. Yes. Not haunting a, a sheet? Yeah. No. I was like, what if I could be a ghost for Halloween? You're like, oh, the only way you can be a ghost for Halloween is when I pull the sheet off of you. You're actually not there. Yeah. Yeah. You've talked so about we didn't, this. We didn't talk about haunting a sheet. I've got a new plan. I'm gonna haunt the sheets in the conjuring house. 